Yo, what is up? My name is Roger. I'm going to be teaching you how to go from your small single piston brake to these big 4Runner brakes on your 240Z for cheap. Let's get right into it. Alright, so we're going to start off with the parts. First, you're going to want your caliper. You're going to want a rotor. The spacer that aligns the rotor with the new caliper setup. And your brake pads. Alright, so you just want to remove all the stock stuff. You take out this bolt here, remove the whole hub assembly. There should be four bolts back here, and that just removes the rotors. And then the two bolts back here to remove the caliper, and of course your brake line. Alright, so now that you have your hub bearing removed, you want to take off the nut, and you're going to want to take out the bearing that falls out with it. Flip over to the other side, and just take off the bolts. These are the bolts that hold the rotors in. And we're going to be switching them out for new ones. Okay, now that you have those bolts removed, you're going to want to put the spacer first. And then after that, put your rotor to follow. You want to line up all the holes. So unfortunately the OEM bolts are not going to work, so I had to go buy new ones, and these are just going to be placed here, where you have the old ones. Alright, and you're just going to want to bolt them down. Gonna want to make sure that you tighten everything correctly and that nothing's loose. Alright, now that they're all tightened, this should be the finished product here. There goes hub, spacer, rotor. Alright, so now that you're done assembling all that, now you're just gonna want to put the hub back on, put this bolt back on. Tighten it all down. So I'm not tightening everything perfectly because I'm just going to have to disassemble some things again and I'm going to be down here again. But let's move on to the caliper and putting the brake pads in. Alright, so now that you have your caliper and your brake pads, you're going to want to make sure that you use the one with the bleeder that's pointing up. So the caliper is going to get mounted like this bleeders right here because if you have the bleeder down there you can't get the air out because the air has to come out from up here not down there so you're going to take your brake pads make sure that the one with the two wear bars is going on the inside so that's going to be the back and then mine didn't come with the wear bar in the front so the, this is going to be the front side of it i'm just going to go in there so now i'm just going to put the brake pads into the caliper and i'm going to mount it and show you guys how to do that so, the awesome part about these calipers is that they just bolt onto the stock location. The only sort of cutting or modifying that you have to do to this assembly would be the dust shield that's here. You would have to cut it just to make room for the caliper here. I don't have one, so we're just going to proceed with just mounting it. So, now that the caliper is mounted with the brake pads, we have the spacer and we have the rotor. All that would be left would be hooking up the brake line and bleeding it. I'm not going to be doing that this video just because I'm going stainless steel brake lines. I could possibly make a video about how to switch to stainless steel, how to put everything in here, and how to bleed the system. But for now, that's all you need. Alright, now that everything's assembled, I'm going to give you guys a rundown of where I got everything and what cars they're from. First, we'll start off with the caliper. The caliper came off of a 1989 Forerunner. The rotor came off of a non-turbo. Make sure you get the non-turbo 300ZX, I believe from 87 or 85. The spacer here in the middle came from eBay. I think the Z Car Depot had it for $85 plus shipping. The rotor was like 
under 20 the caliper was probably let me check the caliper with the core fee was 47 dollars and something cents so all this can be done under 300 dollars when you include the stainless steel brake line setup it'll be roughly in the 300s low 300s at the most but yeah a lot of people sell these kits for about 500 dollars why not just find the parts yourself and do it yourself for under $200 less. So you save $200 and it just takes out a little bit more time of your day. So I'll have all these parts linked down below where I got it from Rock Auto, where I got the spacer and the rotor, everything will be down below with the prices. I'll give them a more exact price of how much I paid for everything. The only thing that I didn't buy online was these bolts that go here. It's just because I went to my local auto store. They were like maybe like 10 bucks for all, for both sides. But let me show you guys the finished product on the other side. Here's a little peek at my car. I'll give you guys a little rundown as soon as I show you everything. So here's what it looks like. You can kind of see it. Sorry, I'm in a tight space, but you see that the rotor's there. And it clears. I believe these clear with 15-inch wheels and higher. I had don't mind these ugly wheel setup because these were on my other car I had 14 inches on this car before but this is what I have temporarily just to run everything so I don't want to cut the video too short because I don't know how long it's gonna be so I'm gonna give some time just to give a quick rundown on my car this is a 1972 240z with an RV25 top mount turbo I have a new intake manifold I could give a whole rundown on a car in a later video, but just here's a peek of how it's going so far. Down here I have an LS. Down here I have an LSD setup. Barely see it, but it's there. But yeah, this is the car. Alright cool, well thanks for watching for the front end big brake kit. My next video is going to be the rear end. I will be doing a GT500 from 2010 rear end. So we're going to be going from the drum brakes that I don't have on actually to calipers and just a regular setup because it's more modern and this is a lot bigger surface than the stock ones. So yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos. Here's my Instagram. It's 240 RBZ. Subscribe to my channel to get more videos on this car. I have a lot more to come. Just to give you guys a quick peek. So, for the next upcoming videos, I'm going to be doing more engine work. The engine runs, but I just want to do some cleaning up. I'm going to be installing a new fuel reel, new injectors, new ECU, just finishing every light touch that it needs. I now have a CLSD in the rear end, so I'm going to be teaching you guys how to rebuild and install these. And just interior bits. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, comment it down below. I'll get to everything that I can. If anybody else can answer any questions, feel free to. If you have any suggestions for any videos that you would like to see, uh, I'll make sure to take them into suggestion. So yeah, once again, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Alright, peace to the next video.